A text message from non-competitors? We are off to the ABT Oz Open. It is at the uh, in Grafton and Clarence River. Uh, very, very cool spot to fish. And a uh, bit of a long road trip ahead. I've been going for about three hours now. I'm just about to pull over for my first break and have a bit of a coffee. But uh, I thought I'd cut an intro while I'm driving along. Obviously, I'm doing it on my dash cam, so you don't have to worry about that. It's all hands-free. I'm not touching anything uh, for all you haters out there. But um, let's get on to the um, Oz Open. It is a singles-only event, and uh, we've got some observers that are probably going to come out in the boats with us. It's really cool. It's at base, so we take your photos, send them through. You'll be able to check out well, well, by the time this goes to air, it won't really matter, but the scores are live on the ABT website and uh, Facebook and YouTube. There'll be live streaming. There'll be lots of stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, on the show last week, we sort of made some predictions on who's going to uh, who's going to perform and who's not. Uh, let's see if they come through. But uh, for now, yeah, as I said, this is just an intro video um, just to see, um, give you guys a bit of a shout out and I said I'll run a camera all year, which I'm doing, and um, I'll do some updates on the, on the trip um, and uh, what happens once I get there. So uh, I shall talk to you all uh, later on. Hopefully, I'm uh, by the time I talk on this again, it should be about Coffs Harbour, which is a solid eight hours drive from um, Wodonga. Uh, living the life of a Victorian bass fisherman, uh, you got to travel everywhere to catch bass, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, talk to you all later on at the Big Banana or thereabouts, Coffs Harbour. Here we are, uh, coffee stop number one, on the way to Grafton, the OBT uh, Bass Australian Open, and um, yeah, it's a long drive today, but um, I'm punching as many hours again, I hope to get to Coffs Harbour tonight and uh, crash there tonight but uh, yeah we're about three hours into the trip and um, everything's going smoothly just done all my safety checks on the on the boat and trailer and make sure everything's working properly but uh, yeah we cruise along uh, looking forward to this one been looking forward to this one for a long time so uh, I'll check back in with everyone a little bit later on uh, probably when I get to Coffs Harbour so uh, Safe travels everyone that's travelled into the open and we'll see you all uh, there previous day. Bye. We're here for stop number two. I thought uh, traffic was getting bad so I thought I'd kill some time and jump in and have a look at the Hunter River. Uh, I'm not going to put the boat in. Tides are all wrong. There's plenty of driftwood floating down but I um, thought I'd check it out for later in the year. It's a twin lane boat ramp. Parking shouldn't be a problem as long as there's not a lot of locals here. But um, I'll spin the um, spin the camera. Give you a view of the river. There's about 10,000 potty mullet at the um, at the boat ramp. The highway bridge that you go over is up there. And uh, obviously downstream down there. So, uh, pretty cool. Not even sure if I'm supposed to be out on this pontoon, but uh, there's a heap of driftwood floating down in the background behind me there. Um, must have had some good rain or something around. But, yeah, so looking forward to this round as well. We'll uh, keep pushing my way up, but... Um, just go back here and show you some <coughs> car parking is going to struggle. The longer vehicles are going to struggle. But obviously plenty of room for Morgo to set up. It's a big park. It's probably six, seven hundred metres long. And as long as you're not too long, you'll fit in the parking down here. So, uh, yeah, there's the Hunter River. 
First time I've actually stopped here. Thought while well, the traffic's really bad, it's about uh, three o'clock going through Hexham, so it's pretty tight. So I'll just uh, call in and check it out. I'm not going to fish it. I'll just keep going on and uh, get to Grafton. All right, catch us. All right, it's nearly midnight. Uh, check in. Uh, there you go. We're at the big banana. Uh, made it to Coffs Harbour. Not sure whether I'm going to push through um, to Grafton tonight or just pull over. I'm yeah, a bit tired, but uh, yeah, pretty much here. So 45 minutes ago, we'll uh, just see uh, see how it tracks. But uh, there it is. All right, you'll probably see we've made it here. We're in the main street of Grafton. So uh, a little bit early. I'm about uh, eight hours early, but it doesn't matter. Uh, breakfast time now, and uh, go around and catch up with Bo. I'm staying at Bo's place, so we'll go from there. Um, but uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. So we're sitting here, it is, what, what, what's the date today? 24th of the 5th, so it's the day before Prefix Day for the uh, Rapala Bass Australian Open. Bo's dog's been really quiet all afternoon and just decided to talk to us. But uh, Bo Everly uh, is here rigging up, getting through all his gear. Um, what are your thoughts on the Open this year, Bo? Very excited. Uh, quality field, 45 boats. Um, and every fellow that's in in the open can fish, can fish. So um, it's a river round. Anything can happen. Um, so yeah, it'll be exciting. Pre fish is tomorrow. We are all set up. Bo's got his uh, little electric boat. He's uh, using the Mercury Avatar for the weekend. So the electric boat. He's going to be limited on distance, but I'm hoping he actually wins it. So. Um, looking forward to this one, going to, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've got any predictions, I did them on show the other night, so I probably don't need to go back into them, but uh, I know this thing's going to pump through some fuel on the weekend, I'm going to have a bit of a crack tomorrow, I'll uh, go downstream to start with, put him down there, uh, fish down there for the morning, then I'll go upstream in the afternoon, and uh, give us a shout out tomorrow night, and let you know which way I'm going for comp day, so, uh, Looking forward to this one. Um, it's been a long day today because we've sort of been sitting around doing nothing, but I think we've organised everything, we've packed everything, the boat's all packed. Uh, we've done our social thing, we've gone and had uh, dinner with everyone, caught up with everyone, and uh, yeah, we'll see everyone on the water. So uh, I'm looking forward to finding out where the fish are tomorrow, hopefully. Um, I am a bit of a, not a river rat, um, so we'll see how the old pond fisherman goes. But we'll see you later on. fish, fifth cast. It was a decent fish, but um, I left that spot 
um, around about three or four more spots and um, the tide was all wrong for where I was so I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow um, but a little bit more run and gun oh, I think I did 80 84 k's uh, today so covered a fair bit of everything downstream um, went way up the back of the cold stream until I couldn't get any further and caught no fish up there so uh, I've ruled that out at least um, I'm somewhat rigged for tomorrow, Rapala has given us some packs today, so I want to get some of that um, uh, sponsor karma. So I'm going to um, gonna leave three rods there to tie on something that we get in the in the pack tonight to maybe win big bass. So I've got no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm taking off reasonably, uh, reasonably early, so if I if I stick with my plan at the moment and drain hop, I'm probably going to get two or three drains before anyone else does, so that'll help. Um, but the winds blown up it's it's like the grand final it's just muck all the way home and it's going to be the same tomorrow so uh, the guys in the big boats will really come in their own by tomorrow afternoon but we'll bash back through um, I'm not going to go as far as I did today um, and try and fish some uh, areas a lot closer to the start line just because my old back doesn't handle that um, that bashing around so um, yeah, we'll get plenty of footage. Uh, got some from today. I'll run the camera both days and uh, give you some updates uh, as we go through. A text message from non competitors. Um, your observers, a few oh, of you mom. have been um, <laughs> alerted that you may have an observer tomorrow. Um, the observers know they're not allowed to help you with anything fishing related. Um, they can't share information with you, they can't net your fish, they can't hand you fishing gear um, during the tournament session. Only one rod per angler to be used at any one time. Um, there are some speed zones in place throughout the arena. They've been marked on that arena map that's on the ABT website. So speeding can result in penalties or session disqualifications for multiple infractions. Um, again, check out that map on the website. <sighs> it's game day. Still being a little quiet because the boat's not up yet, but... Um Pre-fish yesterday was terrible. I um, only got one fish, um, so I haven't worked out a pattern. Um, so today is just going to be a bit of a grind. If I'm looking like this this afternoon, you know I haven't caught any fish. But um, no, it's um, it's four o'clock. Gates open at five o'clock. Um, going to do usual, make me wraps, having me morning coffee and um, your boat's packed ready to go, we're all hooked on, just got to do the morning dump run and should be ready but I um, don't know what else to say other than uh, it, was, it was a struggle street yesterday, I think I threw about 45 different lures, I nailed it down to three, I'm gonna, I've got three um, I'm really going to concentrate on today, but I think it's just going to be pull up on a bank and just keep going until I come across fish. I think I did 80, 80 odd k's of travel yesterday. I don't think I need to do that much today to find fish. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, I don't know what to say. I've got nothing. <laughs> Yeah. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn, ain't that great I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy Oh, Hold my beer for a minute, I'm about to quit my job, cash in for a ticket I'm going on a trip, and I don't plan to visit, I'm gonna stay there till I feel like I'm winning Oh and this is just the beginning I need a big change, help me feel like living I need a big swing, home runs I'm hitting And I'll never look back, moving on till I get it all And we all got dreams We all want things But what you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? And do you believe You can do anything But what you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? Fight to die, oh 
is my game to play to claim a brand new name, oh And I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm a bit nervous that I might screw everything up that I've ever done But what's the point of living if you ain't having fun? I guess I'll try this, try So my surface fish come on a little duo zicada that I've been throwing at Blue Rock and Glen Maggie. I'll put up a cut of that. I like a really fast action, uh, lighter rod to throw my surface on. And I was throwing the um, Salt Finesse series, uh, the Voyager, uh, Bone Voyager um, Salt Finesse series of rods. And um, as I said, in a fast action, it's seven foot six. So it casts that little lure a long way. And... Um, just gives a fish enough time to uh, take that lure down before you uh, set in the hooks and it's got a little bit of meat in the backbone to uh, make sure that they uh, get them in their lips. And that was teamed up with a little uh, ATC 800 size spin reel uh, with, uh, I was running 10 and 10 um, in my line class. Didn't get busted off for the weekend, I was fishing in fairly open water. Um, so it was 10 and 10 on all my rods for the weekend and uh, that was the rod combo I was using for rod and reel combo that I was using for the surface action that I had three For the bait caster, I was throwing the spinner baits on. It was a DRC 64M, uh, it's a bone drago rod, 10 and 10 pound line, uh, with the Combat CF uh, 100 size bait caster reel. A uh, really good combo. Uh, that uh, that rod itself um, is only six foot four in length, but it's a fast action, so it's really good for flipping in to those edges and banks. And I caught that one fish on a spinner bait on that rod. Well, I'm not sure if any of that footage worked. That was a hard day. Um, ended up with six fish. And last time I checked, I was in 12th place, but guys got to end up as a second runner.
boats ago, so I'll drop down from there. But happy with 12th place, keeps me in striking distance. Couldn't have done it with our bows help in the in the sense of um, I needed one more fish, and he gave me a bit of a pep talk and and told me to fucking keep my head in the game and. I did that and ended up uh, upgrading in the last five minutes with a um, random fish in the middle of nowhere. So, a um, bit of luck there. Uh, I'll take it. And uh, yeah, on to tomorrow. I'm still, well, I don't think I'll catch Morgo. He's gone hell for leather. But um, yeah, I'm looking to uh, at least get in the money. So, I'm going to move up uh, three or four spots to get in the money. So, that's what I'll be chasing. And uh, We'll see how we go anyway, so, um, yeah, interesting day. Um, yeah. Awesome, so that's the end of uh, day one. Um, Bo's, uh, Bo's had a big bag today. Uh, Bill's done all right, so everyone in the Bluefin team has done well. Uh, I'm sitting in 16th place. Um, I didn't have any opportunities to um, get any more fish, but I'm happy that what I got actually stuck. So tomorrow's plan is to go out and do exactly the same as what I did today and uh, see what happens. But, um, yeah, look, tomorrow's a different day. More, it's more goes to lose from here. Um, for all of us guys sitting around that 20, uh, 20 mark, yeah, we're all looking just to get into that top 10 and cut a check. So uh, we'll uh, get this big girl going and uh, yeah, talk to you all tomorrow. Right, Bo, tell us about your day today. Today was a good day. Um, I had the Avatar on the back for the first time, got to use it. Um, little boat maxed out at 12 kilometres an hour, which was the fastest the little P395 has ever went, so that's always a great start to the morning. Um, got to my first spot, um, found some fish pretty quickly. Um, first fish came on a DT8, which was my second biggest fish for the day, I think it was. Um, and then continued um, finding some fish that were schooled up on prawns feeding and pulled out the ZX40 and brained a couple more um, pretty quickly. I had a two hour spell where I probably caught 20 plus fish and that. Um, that's where my bag came from. Um, had some missed opportunities but hopefully tomorrow I will be better. <laughs> um, but look, I got my bag. Um, that's all I hoped for today was to get my bag and tomorrow's a new day and we'll see what happens. Awesome. You better introduce your offsider standing there with you. <laughs> so, um, some of you may know, um, this is Tay. He's a mad little fisherman and is usually on the water with me. Yeah. Say good day. Hi. So, you fished an electric comp just recently. Yeah. Tell, tell everyone uh, how you went. I just recently fished the ABT Electric Series. It was the second round, was that? Yeah. Yep, yeah, second the round. second round it was the the local one, and then I got tenth place on a Bassman um, jig head with a Z-Man um, soft plastic, and then a beetle spin on top, and that's what I caught my one fish on. Awesome! And not only that, you're throwing in the sponsors, Karma. You're uh, you know all your stuff. We've been chatting all weekend, so uh, thanks for uh, thanks for feeding us and everything. Yeah. Um, look out for this guy, he'll be on the circuit very, very soon, I think. Yeah, grand final, here you come, isn't it? Mm, <laughs> mm, looking forward to it. So, um, Bo, I think you've undersold it today. I know um, probably sitting where you're sitting on the on the leaderboard at the moment is is not great, but as you said, you missed opportunities. But uh, my eyes nearly popped out of my head when I looked at your scorecard about halfway through the day. Like, I, I'd had four fish and... and what did you say? You caught twenty odd fish. Yeah, tw uh, yeah, I had a spell of yeah, would, at least twenty fish in the two hours. Um, but yeah, it got more during the day. So yeah, um, I don't know. The rivers, the rivers weird at the moment. Like the other day, I, I couldn't catch fish on a blade. So 
I was just DT8ing it hard and then come to the comp and it's back to a blade. So, yeah, I can't pick it at the moment. Awesome. Uh, any predictions? We're, we're going into day two now. We know that Moore goes well out in front and he did the big long run to get those fish. Yeah. Do we think he's going to get overrun? Maybe. Um, if he didn't whack him too hard up there today. Um, yeah, but look, there's it's, it's still close. Like, yeah, Morgo got a great bag up there, but there's a couple of boys that are not far behind him. And depending on what happens tonight, if we get a shower or something, this river could change up and be very difficult tomorrow. So... Um, Morgo's got it at the moment, but I'm going to say Mike Nelson's going to come back somewhere. Ooh, big yeah. call. Awesome. Thanks. Never stop. I'll get it if I want it. Gotta make to myself a promise. I won't quit. Keep going till I got it. I won't get Yo, no, I ain't the type to give up If I do something, man, I do it till I get what I want I turn a business out of nothing into something I love I got a poker face, but honestly, I'm not one to bluff I flip a switch, never miss, man, I always stay up Don't let them see you, bitch, always have a plan to stay tough This life ahead of you ain't easy, it was built to be rough But that's what makes a personality, is tragedy, bruh uh, so keep your head on your shoulders Now we ain't out here moving rocks We out here moving boulders Now we ain't getting postal rides We out here making posters And we ain't got nothing to hide We move forward like soldiers You better wake up for the pay stub Or you'll pay up Don't make love to the game, bro. Fuck the game up Change up, rearrange stuff To your greatness Famous for the way up Play the game, bro. Never stop, don't get it if I want it Gotta make to myself a promise I won't quit, keep going till I got it I won't give up till I'm on top, yeah You know I'm always honest There ain't no way I'm ever stopping I won't quit, keep going till I got it I won't give up till I'm on top, yeah. Going up the water on day two I decided to stop in at the ferry Nobody had fished it all weekend I found out why But uh, it was worth a chance
32. Hello everyone watching on Facebook Live. You've got Nicole from ABT. I'm here with Matt from Rapala, Australia. And it is our final session for our 2023 Rapala Bass Australian Open. We're in beautiful Grafton. Um, the event arena is the Clarence River. Huge waterway. Massive waterway. So it's an uh, extremely large kind of arena for these anglers to be fishing on. So you've got some guys that are traveling up to 95 kilometers away and still being able to stay within the arena boundaries so uh, it provides anglers with a lot of different opportunities to fish it gives them a bit of space lots of different structure to fish and it's been um kind of a day of catches and catch knots <laughs> so we finished up yesterday's session at close of business we had steve morgan in the lead um we had tom slater hot in his heels um then there's about a kilo difference mike nelson sitting in third a um, few catches coming in and out today. Let's just have a quick look at that scoreboard, Matty. Um, so, um, Mike yeah. Nelson has jumped up to the leader, so he actually shot other guns pretty early this morning. So he got a few quick fish, which kind of helped him out quite easy, quite a lot. Uh, and then Corey Golding, he's been kind of going from like he was in first, and then he went down to second, third, and then he's back up to second again. So yeah, as we scroll yeah. down that one, I think one. What I was throwing all uh, my blades on was actually a blade and tails rod, seven foot rod, a four to eight pound uh, rod. I was actually using a higher ratio reel, so I was using the 2000 reel, the um, ATC uh, Virtuous in the 2000 um, with a, a ZX blade, any of the ZX blades in the lighter colours, once again with 10 and 10 pound line. Him in the side, I think. That's the one I want. Yes! That is number five and it's 38. One centimetre upgrade there, that's a 35.
Right. On this so when it was a, a, a driven project from all those countries, was Australia the number one there, or were Japan, Japanese doing it for you? No, the Japanese, the Japanese are pretty probably a little bit more picky than we are in Australia. But I think for a for a timber lure, the, the gilded finishes and everything on those on those elite lures that we're doing now for trout, bass, and everything like that is second to none. So, well, thank you very much for your uh, your sponsorship this weekend. Round of applause for a parlor. There are other, a number of the other brands is 13 Fishing Day sponsored the Jollop. Pro Series for the year as well. So uh, very heavily involved in tournament fishing. Um, because we had 45 boats fishing this weekend, we have payments, we pay one in five. So we pay the top nine places here this weekend. I'm going to read through all the results now. And uh, once this presentation's over, the blacked out scoreboard will be lifted. You'll be able to see all the results. But everyone likes to know where they come. So I'm going to read the results uh, out from... 45th, have we got them in here, Nicole? Yep, we got them here through to first. I'm just going to read them so that you know uh, where you came. People that cut caught fish. Actually, I'll do the top 20. People, but Mitchell Kane doesn't want anyone to know he came 28. Uh, Rightio, yeah. let's start with Berkey in 20th, 10 for 5.8. 1 1 kilos, 19th. Glenn Bailey from Ballard, a 9 fish for 5.863 kilos. Tony Thorley, the unofficial mayor of Grafton, 10 fish for 5.98 kilos in 18th. 17th place, Adam Mears, uh, 8 fish for 6.027 kilos. And no spills this week, Adam? We're all good? Yep, no worries. Didn't fall in? Good work. 16th place, uh, 10 out of 10 for 6.055 kilos, Dave Browning. 15th place, 10 out of 10 for 6.1 kilos, Maddie Langford. In 14th place from 13 fishing, 8 out of 10 fish for 6.1 kilos, Mick Horn. 13th place, and I reckon uh, I reckon he deserves a round of applause because he caught 10 out of 10 for 6.163 kilos and did it in an electric boat. Well done, Bo Everly. Good on you, mate. <laughs> None of this, uh, and I'll tell you what, that became what that 13th place should beat another, uh, like, 20, 21 boats or something like that. So, well, third. 31 boats should be. So you did well, Bo. Congratulations with that new Mercury Avatar. 12th place, 
10, 10 fish for 6.182 kilos, Matt Vaccaro, and an 11th, sorry, 12th of Matt, 11th place, 10 for 6.76 kilos, was Tegan Heath. 10th place. Terrible coming 10th, because you don't get a check. You do get a badge, though, so 10 fish for 6.895 kilos, Brian Everingham. Come and get a badge, mate. AKA Doodle Squeezer. <laughs> Is that allowed to be on the internet, mate? I think so. um, uh, yeah, you caught yourself a, a big bash yesterday, mate. Uh, did you follow it up with others today? Because you said you were going to get big joints today. I definitely did try. There was no doubt about it. There was, uh, I got stitched up once uh, on, a, on a reasonable fish. would have been similar size. Other than that, that, that was the only one I've seen all day. All the rest of them were those small ones, unfortunately. And uh, so the one you missed uh, cost you a thousand bucks. Well done. Yeah, thanks for that. Could happen to Arthur Blow. All right, nice ninth place. Going around here, uh, eighth fish for six point triple nine kilos. Uh, Di was Tom Slater. Come and get yourself a check. No bad. I'll give you the check afterwards. I bought the check with Tom. Well done, mate. Here's your badge. And hang around. I'll write your check before you go. Uh, in eighth place, nine out of ten fish for seven point zero zero nine kilos. Dane Price. Come and get yourself a badge, mate. Always on the uh, on the dollars end, I think, mate. I think I saw you one event in Victoria, didn't win money, and you didn't like that because you've been winning it ever since. There you go. Good on you, Dane. Have a good night. Oh, there you go for your collection. He's just bragging because they're all first and second. Seventh place, uh, another representative, one of the great ABT sponsors, uh, Bluefin. He caught 10 out of 10 fish for 7.324 kilos. Bill Latimer. Thousand? Don't know. You'll get some money later on, mate. Well done. Uh, in sixth place, another one of the Team Bluefin guys. They did well this weekend. Uh, three in the top 12 so far. 10 out of 10 fish for 7.433 kilos. Corey Goldie from Victoria. Sixth place badge and a bit up. So well done. No, no, come and come and have a chat to us, mate. We'll talk to the top six here. Um, you did it. You sort of rocketed up the scoreboard oh, yeah, today, sorry. mate. Uh, what did you change and what happened? Sorry. Uh, well, I got them all on surface yesterday. It wasn't going to happen today. Uh, the wind blew up earlier. I uh, have to thank Bo Everly. He um, put me onto a spot he couldn't get to in the avatar and went down there and nailed them today. So thanks, Bo. Good charity, mate. Well done. Thank you. Uh, in fifth place, uh, ten out of ten fish for eight point one six four kilos. Uh, in one of the smaller boats in the field as well, Joey Urquhart. Come and get on, yourself a few clothes, mate. And I know what this place pays. 1,500 wing wangs, mate. So that's more than a tank of fuel in your boat, mate. Uh, tell us where you, where you travel to this weekend. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, I fish right down uh, Shark Creek near McLean. So it's a pretty big run. Probably not in your guys' size boat. But uh, first thing before I say, just a big shout out to Coney. Um, we both pre-fished in there together and we both worked together yesterday and he said I could have the creek today. So, man, that's like, how good is that for sportsmanship? So, thanks, Coney. Really appreciate that, mate. Um, so, yeah, I uh, yeah, did the run down there each day and literally uh, it was all tide dependent. As soon as that tide hit, you caught them and I caught them on every fish on surface. So, uh, lost two really big fish today, which hurt me a little bit, but uh, that's all right. That's fishing. You've got 1,500 bucks in the pocket, mate. Well done. And Joey has been tasked with making an Australian Open perpetual trophy for next year, so if you've got any good ideas, give it to him. In fourth place, a uh, great comeback today. He caught 3.628 kilos yesterday for five fish. Today, five fish for 4.713 kilos, giving him 10 fish for 8.341 kilos. Uh, that is Chris Hickson. Come and grab yourself. Some money. 1750 bucks, mate. That might fix up all his boat, eh? <laughs> I, I lost his raptor remote today to drop it and it bounced off the front deck in the water. So. <laughs> You're about 400 bucks from BLA, aren't they? Yeah. Dad, Dad, Dad's petrol? I didn't see where it went, I mean. Yeah. Um, tell us about, uh, you were catching your fish in pretty interesting ways this weekend, mate. Uh, tell us a story about uh, some of the lures you are catching them on. Yeah, I tried to mix it up a bit. After, um, after practice, there was just a, a lot of really small fish coming about. Um, I based my whole fish off the dollar kick of curly, pretty much. That was the that was the staple throw that if you can't catch them. Um, but after catching so many, I just went to big lures. I tied on a 140 mil gearcraft jointer claw, slow sink. Um, got a big fish on that on practice day, 
and then threw it for a couple of hours yesterday. It was really hard then an electric to fish it properly, so I only got the one fish on it. Uh, and then this morning I thought bugger it, they're eating the kick curly right through the day. Let's go a big top water and got a 43 and a half on a um, Imakatsu Ironmouth, so like 110, 120 mil top water. Big, big, uh, big top water. Yeah, big top water. And then when they wanted it, they really wanted it. I got another 36 and a half on that and a couple other smaller ones as well. So just trying to mix it up a bit. They're seeing a lot of the same stuff. Um, got bit on the kick curlies again this morning, lost a couple of big fish on them, but. Yeah, it was good. Entertaining. Well done, mate. Uh, you hadn't fished a bass tournament for a while, uh, just like riding a bike, eh? Hey? Fourth place. Yeah, it, it was a bit difficult yesterday without a troll motor. I would have liked to have had a proper crack at it, but um, good comeback. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Um, well, I would bring the top three up. Let's do it. Top three. Mike Nelson, Mick Johnson and moi. <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> Mike's won a couple of events here, mixed lead in the Angler of the Year, and I've got the microphone so I can make up the rules. It's going to be a pretty fair fight, I reckon. <laughs> got three badges here as well. First, second, third, and then there's a couple of checks. One's got 8,000 bucks on it, one's got 4,000 bucks on it, one's got 2,500 bucks on it. Uh, let's have a chat about the fishing first. Uh, Mike Nelson, I'll, I'll have a chat to you first, mate. You're very consistent on this river, but every time you do well, it seems to be on a different part of the river, mate. You're pretty versatile when it comes to finding the fish on this joint. Yeah, well, look, it's a massive river, and if you don't go looking, you'll never find those fish. Um, yeah, so... Uh, what, was your, what was your plan this weekend? <laughs> well, Friday wasn't great. I didn't have a very good pre-fish at all. Um, I did move around a hell of a lot, probably burnt about, I don't know, 80 litres of fuel. Uh, didn't have a whole lot, though, and... Come Saturday, I was still scratching around a little bit, but by 9 a.m. I uh, changed up what I was doing a bit and uh, started to come good. What was your gun lure for the weekend? Well, I mixed it up between uh, Beetle Spin and Rapala BX Brat. There you go. Good to see you using the sponsor product. Mick Johnson, you're also a Rapala guy, uh, and when those scoreboards got blanked out at late morning this morning, um, you were the one making some moves and shakes. Some lots of fish over 40 centimetres, which two years ago wouldn't have made much of a difference here, but this year it's fishing tough. They're making differences, mate. What did you change up yesterday to get your fish today? Yeah, so pre fish and the first day on Saturday, I was just throwing cranks and they were eating them not too bad, but just didn't get that size. Uh, got a good one this morning. The, when I went out this morning, my plan was just to, to go and grind out a, a bag and then you know go from there maybe maybe uh, swing to the fences and you know, go and try and get some bigger ones. But got a good one, I think it was a 400 um, off the crankbait in the morning, off a rock wall and sort of just made the decision luckily to go put a frog in my hand and, and get out of the wind and get upstream and do, uh, into the cold stream and, and just throw a frog. Just kept it in my hand and, and yeah, they, when, they, uh, when they ate it, they just ate it. And if they missed it, they'd come back and yep. come back until they got it. So was there a lot of um, traffic up the coal screen? Because last time Mike won that Clarence here, he was up there. No, when I was up there, I think there was maybe three or four other boats. So had them all to yourself and the big fish were biting? Pretty much, yeah. I found when that tide turned this morning, it was whatever it was, an outgoing tide. As soon as that tide turned, I would have had all them fish, I think they had a bag by 9, 9.30, something like that. As soon as it turned, it was really hard to get a bite. Well, it's interesting because I don't actually even know who's won because... Uh, I put in third place here. I can see it here. Nicole's folded over. Third place, ten out of ten, five point five five seven kilos is Mike Nelson. Well done, Mike. Congratulations. That's yours. This is yours. And uh, I'll see you for a check later. Don't go home until I write your check. So you're out of here. Summer, Nicole, are you up? Who's up? Timmy, you're up. All right. Get the sponsor to do all the hard work. This looks easy doing the MC and mate, but uh, here you have a go. It's underneath that folded up bit there. <laughs> oh, that's close. That's close <laughs> it is very close. So how do you do this thing? I don't know how I do it. <laughs> well, everyone wants to know. All these people looking. Everyone wants to know. No, we'll do it. We'll do it quickly. There's about um, there is about 1.2 kilos in it. So Mick Johnson got second with 10 fish for 9.314 kilos. <laughs> and winner, which was caught on the Shadrack Elite 55, I think, all the fish which is uh, Sponsors Karma, Steve Morgan with 10 out of 10 for 10.518 kilos.
Thanks, Timmy. Um, anyone who watched my um, my highlights yesterday will know that I did the big run down to the um, down to the Esk River. Um, it's somewhere I've always looked at on the maps. Um, we came down for reconnaissance a couple of weeks ago and just with the idea of checking out to see if there are any fish on the reef at McLean, but also to go and find my way into the S because it's pretty nasty to get into. Um, and we found our way in and we found some fish um, in the river. So uh, that was our plan. Um, I didn't have a second plan because there was still no bass on the reef by the time we went here. Uh, each day it was really hard to get in. If you ever want to go and just uh, go and fish the S and you're going in a big bass boat, make sure it's the top of the tide because it is shallow down the bottom. This morning we only just got in there and it was half tied up. Um, caught all the fish and, and I believe in the Sponsor Karma thing, it was on that Rapala Shadrap Elite 55, which every angler got one in their, in their kit as well as uh, a lot of other cool new baits that Rapala have coming out. And it was old school bass fishing. I never saw a fish on the live scope the whole time. It was casting at uh, big timber and brushy snags and catching a variety of bass and estuary perch up the top. I think I caught probably 12 fish maybe yesterday and maybe about 10 fish today, including one that was uh, about just under 45 centimetres. So I, I know I had um, Anthony Duff as my observer today and that big fish hit it and then I went around about two or three snags and it finally came out and when he put it in the net, I said, oh, that's probably the fish that, that might win the open for us and it ended up that that was the one. So uh, thank you very much to Rapala for sponsoring. Thanks to Duffman for uh, coming out today and uh, Bob Hart yesterday for coming up and doing the epic run up the river. Uh, used about 85 litres of fuel each day and that big V8 Mercury and uh, and it's a hero or zero thing. Um, I'm pretty good at coming last in bass tournaments so it's finally good to, to do well in one. So thank you very much. Thanks for the sponsors and everyone drive safely home. Cheers. The promotion we had. The promotion was it, the biggest fish each day on a Rapala lure and um, I think from Nicole then, you won both of them. So day, day one. <laughs> and, day, and day two, 40, what was it? 44 and a half. 44 and a half, sweet. So we've talked about the Shad Rapper lead again. This is the one that uh, that came in the, the angler bag. It's I think it's a, it's a prawn colour. Yep, bone prawn. Bone prawn, 12 pound litre, braided line, chuck it into snags, hang on. What I found with this lure is really good for crawling through snags. It's slightly buoyant, so if you wind it down to the snag and it hangs up, give it a flick, it comes back up. And uh, I think I only had to go in once today to get it off a snag. So uh, if you ever wonder, if you're ever struggling out there, do the sponsor karma thing, tie on a sponsor lure, and you, you may be well rewarded. So again, thanks Timmy very much, and top 10, I'd like to get you here for your photos, please. Thank you. All right, you're pretty good at this. So, um, Bo, tell us, uh, we're all done and dusted. Where'd you come? Uh, come 13th out of the field of 45 in the little eco boat. So, I am over the moon with that. So, um, you were using the P395 this weekend. Yep, by with, Allocraft. Yep, with the new Avatar Electric. Steve lent you that. Uh, see, the batteries are still in the boat. But, yeah, tell us about how'd you catch fish? Uh, all my fish came on, on it was three lures pretty much. It was the DT8. Um, if you've been following my post, you know I've been flogging the DT8 pretty hard of late. Um, the ZX uh, 40 in 440 and little pink bits. And I got my last upgrade today on a Brat. So that upgraded me from a 28 and a half to a 32 centimetre forker, so that was a nice little upgrade today. So what position did you end up again? Uh, 13th, so... 13th, so you only had to run six, well basically we, we worked it out that you had 6Ks range one way and back, so 12Ks total range uh, with the one battery. The wind was blowing its ass off, so didn't make for great conditions. Morgo's running 90 odd kilometres there and back, so um, proves that the river system's pretty cool. Yeah, no, there's there's fish all through this river system. Um, it's just finding the right size on the right snags at times. But look, I can't complain. I had a few missed opportunities yesterday, which I should have been better at. And today I was better. So they weren't big fish, but I made sure they got into the boat. All right, uh, that's pretty much a wrap. What, uh, you got anyone you want to give a shout out to or um, just to finish this off? Yep, um, so first of all, I'd like to think Thank the Bluefin Fishing Team, um, the boys that weren't here, all your messages and support was great. Um, Brad, big shout out to Brad for um, letting me have this boat for two years. Um, yeah, you're doing great work Brad, keep it up. And a couple of sponsors, um, Bassman Spinnerbaits, 
Um, tonic sunglasses, 13 fishing. Um, you guys are all excellent. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Um, and that's about it. Awesome. Until Thanks very time. much for uh, all the interviews. This oh, I'm back. I'm back home. Uh, it was a long drive, 12, 14 hours of driving. I uh, took my time, got home, um, had a couple of couple of hours that you would say in that time to think about and recap the weekend. Um, had an absolute blast. Pre-fish didn't go to plan. Uh, I was able to just patch together a, a bag of fish uh, throwing surface on the, on the first day. I just picked a bank that I hadn't seen many people on and uh, I fished that until the wind blew up. Then I uh, moved out onto a, a little reef that uh, Bo had put me onto and um, on day one didn't catch any fish there, seen, um, seen Keegan catch a, a 42 there so um, gave me a hint that there was bigger fish there. Um, come Sunday, yeah, well, it uh, it come down to the fact that uh, I, um, I had no real plan, I was going to go back and do what I was doing, I, I was racing up the dam and I thought nobody's fished into the ferries, there's always big fish at the ferries. So I called in there and spent about half an hour, 45 minutes in the ferry dock to see if I could get a big fish to bite and I couldn't. Um, there was plenty in there on the sound of it, just couldn't get them to bite. So I went back to my original bank. I worked up that bank, dropped a couple of fish um, and had some swirls and busts up, so nothing. So I worked all the way up to the reef um, and because the tide was different, um, the reef fired a lot earlier, so uh, I was straight on the fish. Had a really good session there, probably caught 20, 22 fish, uh, but only a few big ones amongst it, and um, that rocketed me up the leaderboard because I got them reasonably early. The tide turned and the bite went off, so not knowing much about tides and I had no other plan, I stayed. Um, once the tide turned back. I thought I was going to get onto some fish, but it just didn't happen. So with about an hour to go, um, I chuffed off and tried a couple other banks and threw spinner baits and stuff like that. But uh, generally didn't work. So um, yeah, thank God for the for the refiring. That really helped me out. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, big thanks to Rapala for uh, round sponsor. Thanks to AVT, Nicole, Steve. Uh, the guys back in the office for doing uh, what they do. It was a really well-run event. Uh, thanks to all of my sponsors. And, um, yeah, we'll see you all in Queensland.